Hello and welcome to another live demonstration. Today I want to introduce you to the new SAA water brushes. Now there's lots of different water brushes out on the market which are great. The difference with the SAA ones is their length of barrel. So they are nice and long which you can see compared to a pen how long they are which means they hold plenty of water. One thing that's different is the way they unscrew. They unscrew right and then they tighten left. Now, I really can never remember my left to, and my right, which is a pain for my other half when I say turn right and it turns right and I meant no, the other right. But I tend to wave my hands now and just go that way. But they loosen on the right, easy to fill. So the barrel feels nice in your hand. It's very easy to just load. And to be honest, you don't use a lot of um, water. So what, tighten to the left, what is a water brush? Um, a water brush is a kind of a, a very unique kind of brush. A really handy brush, great for travelling um, because you've got water on hand and you don't have to find water if you're out in the field. Um, it also gives you that very constant line of water. The valves are designed to constantly keep the hairs moist, giving you that constant wetness. It's not soaking wet like a watercolour brush, but it gives you an, a constant wetness, which is absolutely brilliant because you don't have to keep going in and dipping and reloading. You just keep going um, and you don't realise that you haven't refilled your brush or needed to re-wet. Um, the SAA ones have three. They have the flat, the round, small one, which is really nice, and the round. Um, it's called large because there is one in the middle, but we've, these are the ones we've taken on. So it gives you options on marks and how much water you use. One, I like the ends that fit nicely on the um, end of the pen means you don't lose them and see how handy that is the, the length fits nicely in your hand um, and the clips again if you store them in your bag you can just clip them and then you can see where they are so these are new to the SAA I'm quite pleased with these you can buy them as individuals or a set of three and I'm going to be using them in today's demonstration so deciding what to use them with you can use them with a paint set you can use them with wet paint, um, but I've decided to use watercolour pencils because I think it's been a while since I've used watercolour pencils. And many people ask, what's the best pencil set? I'm looking at something to introduce the children to drawing and painting, or I want some coloured pencils for kids or adults or anyone. And I always suggest watercolour pencils. The reason being is they're a great pencil, you can use them just like you would do a pencil and put the colour on in a very controlled manner. You can layer. And these are the Faber-Castell, so really nice artist quality, which gives a nice layer of pigment and good light fast qualities. And so you can use them like you would do a pencil, but then you've got that really exciting point when you can add water. So I'm just going to prep my watercolour, my water brush, sorry. Just allow the water to start flowing. And then I'm going to start with the light colour first because I've learnt the dark will contaminate the light. And look how lovely the watercolour pencils blend. Now this is paper dependent. So on some papers it may not work as well. I use watercolour paper because I know the paper is prepped to allow for the water and to allow the pigment to flow on the surface. So that's why I choose to use a watercolour paper. Um, this one I think is practice paper. Yeah, this is a practice paper, which is an artist quality paper, but the SAA have called it practice paper just to give you the 
take away that fear of, oh, I'm going to ruin, if I do a bad painting and I've ruined it on expensive paper, this is artist quality paper, um, a cellulose paper, but just cutting a practice paper really helps people be less fearful. And you can see, look at all those tones you've got from those pencils. Let it dry and you can go back in. So I, I recommend watercolour pencils as a really easy travel and a great starting kit to introduce you to colour. So let's get on. I've chosen a strawberry because it's summer and it, it just, I wanted something that had some colour, some nice shape and looks simple, but actually it's surprising how long it takes to build up the colour. Um, I thought it was because it was Wimbledon. I thought you were being clever and doing no. Wimbledon. You see, I actually don't like strawberries. I love the smell of them, but if they taste to me really bitter, so it's not something I actually like. So the image I'm going to use is this one. I've chosen to do one because I've tried it a number of times and I can't do more than one in the time I've got. And I've left this leaf out. For me, it didn't make sense. So you see, I haven't got it here. If it doesn't make sense completely, either you look it up, you work out where it should be, or like I've done here, I've left it out. You don't have to be a slave to photographs. And you'll see in this photograph again, it's really quite flat. It's obviously not a good photo. It's actually not a good print either. It doesn't matter because I'm going to use a little bit of imagination um, because I know it's red and I'm going to work with the colours I've got. But what I've also done is I've printed off a better photo. What it does is show how the strawberry is formed, these little dimples and how the light works with them because I can't see it on that other one. And I might want to put a little bit of this light on the strawberry I'm drawing. So you can see how you can work from two photos but not be a slave to either. Just going to fill in the seeds. Now, I know a strawberry isn't technically a fruit. I think it's, from what I can read, it's part of the stem. It's a growth of some sort. It's not technically a fruit. Um, it's one of those odd ones. So I'm concentrating and colouring on all my seeds. And seeds so it can grow from a seed but most of the time they reproduce from runners and you can grow your strawberries in the ground so they grow upwards or a good way of growing strawberries is to have them hanging which helps keep predators or pests i don't like the word pest because i think everything has a right um, but animals and insects that eat the strawberries away from them if they're hanging so it's a, a nice way to and I've grown strawberries even though I don't eat them so <laughs> I just like the colour but I, it's funny I keep trying to eat one but no that's very bitter right I'm going to put a dark edge around each seed because they're dipped in and this, even though there is going to be light in places, the seed is dipped. And I can always add seeds on if I, I think that it's not working. And I think I've tried to work out, there's a little bit of a structure of where the seeds are. But each strawberry is different. I think as long as you've got colour and shape, you can pretty much tell it's a strawberry and it then you decide how much detail you want to put in whether it's very loose you could even change color because i was having to play with filters on the computer and it looked very fun as a blue strawberry or a green strawberry just have fun that's the main thing but i want to try and see how far i can go with getting this strawberry done in watercolour pencils. Like I say, these are the Faber Castell Artist Quality, which gives me a fabulous amount of pigment down really quickly. Okay. 
Right, I'm going to put a layer of orange on because the red I've got in this set is not red enough. Um, and when I put it down, it seems to be a little bit dull. So if I put a orange colour as a base layer, hopefully that will be able to mix with the red and give it that much more strawberry tone. Now strawberries can come in many different colours, including blue. You do get blue strawberries. I'm sure I read that. Um, but the most common ones are the red. White, I've seen. And Romans, I think, used at them. And they were seen as an aphrodisiac. And they're seen to have healing powers. They ha they're a great source of vitamin C. Missed there. Have more vitamin C than an orange, apparently. Again, don't eat oranges. They're bitter. I must not have a fruit palate. That same orange. I think if you think strawberries are bitter, you're just having bad strawberries. No, I keep trying them. I honestly, because they smell really nice, so they're very tempting. But once you bite into them, oh. They just, no. When well, you cover them with cream and sugar, that's it, and then they're great. Oh. Well, then that's not strawberry, is it? That's just lots of cream and sugar with a strawberry. Oh. I must admit, I do miss not being able to eat a strawberry because they look wonderful and they're bright and cheerful fruit. But, no. Nah. But that, I'm not just against strawberries. I just don't like any fruit, really. But luckily, I like most vegetables, so I can adapt. Okay. So, not being very precise, what I'm actually doing is putting colour down. I'm putting a layer of colour down. The water will make it ping. So, I sorted my pencils into colours so it looked like a rainbow. But what it also does is it helps me um, pick up a colour quickly. I can then see what colour I want. And I'm able to pick it up in a range. You know, if I'm looking for red, I can see whether I want a dark red, a light red. So this is why I moved my pencils into a colour range rather than number range, which sometimes is what you get when you get the tim. Okay, so what am I using? I'm using Pale Geranium Lake. Now, a pencil that's called Strawberry gives you a good clue that that's going to be a really nice strawberry colour. But this is the set I've got. So I'm going to use the colours. And it's quite nice to find a way to get round a colour you don't have, how can I, you know, work round without rushing out to buy it? So this will work really nicely. See, there's a lot of putting colour down. And even now, I think it's starting to look quite nice. The re I've used watercolour paper as well. It's, I actually like the texture. Not only I know the pigment will move, the pencil will move as I want it to, rather than sometimes on, say, a, a copy paper or a cartridge paper, it may not move as well because that's not got the sizing on to allow it. But I like the texture. So I, I think this might even be a rough um, surface. Just it just adds that nice quality. And from the strawberry I can see there, it didn't look very smooth and soft. It has kind of fur over it. Not the fur that you usually throw away, but it has a, f a kind of a fluffy feel to the um, skin. Okay, so let's see what I do when I add some water. 
so it's still wet and I don't know if you can see Gary no you probably can't uh, it's a little mark. and I'm not having to reload it's there instantly which is oh look at that oh, that's really nice sometimes I do find that I want a little bit wetter because I'm used to using a watercolour brush and getting that really very wet hair but this is just so handy you don't have you just keep going you don't have to think about anything you just put in the colour on now Peter, yes uh, we've got a question from Gracie oh hello Gracie a question that you always love oh. You're going to have to make a recommendation. What watercolour pencils do you recommend? Well, see, it's difficult because I haven't tried them all. So I'm not going to recommend specific brands. But if you want a good watercolour pencil, an artist quality gives you the pigment and the pow. But there are good student quality out there that you know it doesn't matter you learn about the pencil before you start to worry about doing exhibition pieces so the very very inexpensive ones are great to start to learn their you know but what they don't give you is that really ping of color straight away so maybe go for a good mid-range pencil or the best pencils you can afford with any art material the best you can afford is off, often you get, I'm not even going to say better results, but you get much more pigment load. And when you talk about pigment load, you're talking about the colour, how quickly it comes through. And often that's what people are looking for. If you're struggling to put layer on and layer on to get the colour you want, then you get disheartened. If you can put it on straight away and it's there, then, you know, that's just a glorious feeling. So... I'm not going to recommend any brand, but the best you can afford and a good student quality or an artist quality pencil. If possible, get one pencil from different ranges. Pencils aren't overly expensive. They're usually a couple of quid each um, and you can get them in the sale. So the best way is to find out which work for you and get one Maybe the same colour, something that you can get in all uh, ranges, an ultramarine or something like that, and just see. And, you w and then that's you learning to see how the pencils work and how that they work for you. So I hope that helps. Got another question as well. Yes. And you can answer this one. Okay. Uh, Anne's asking about uh, your favourite type of sharpener. I have two. One I do have here, which is um, the, oh, what's it called? The pointy, it the, the mini long, point. Long point? Is it the long point? It, no. I think it's a pointy. I right. think it's a doughnut pointy. And what it does is it sharpens, let me get a better colour, the blue. You can see blue. It, point, it sharpens your pencils to that really long point, um, including pastel pencils, but what you have to do with a pastel pencil is just be that little bit more gentle. I often do a bit at a time and test because that really soft core. But again, you can get a pastel pencil to that really long point. And I've gone through this whole tin and I've put them all to a long point just because it, you've got then exposed all that colour. And I'll show you later why I also want that colour exposing. And another one I use a lot if I'm using graphite pencils, is the, what do we call the Alps? AOPS, that's the code we use. Um, I'll do a search. Yeah. Now this is a really nice pencil sharpener. What it does... That's a long point and lead. Yeah. Sharpener. It's a graphite pencil sharpener. Um, possibly could be used for coloured pencils as well, but it's designed for the lead pencil. And what it does is it's got two holes. One hole takes the wood off the pencil and exposes the lead and it's got a flat end. The second hole um, sharpens it to that really long point. You can use 
graphite in this and actually it's recommended between each coloured pencil or pastel pencil especially sharpen a graphite pencil because graphite not only keeps the blade sharp and it cleans it as well. You, you need to take the back off, sometimes leads get stuck, just pop it out. But other than that, it's a really nice sharpener, it gives you a good long point. And the long point pencil sharpener, I couldn't remember what we call it, is brilliant for graphite, but also at the ends, it has little holes. And those little holes, you can sharpen, usually the bigger lead pencils, the um, mechanical pencils, that's what they're called. And I like to use those, but the ones with the thicker leads, they dull, the same as any graphite will, but you can sharpen them in these little holes at the side of this uh, long point pencil sharpener. It also comes with spare blades. So a sharpener that you, you use like this, the blade's dull because of the wood, but it's got two blades that help you, you can refit. So it keeps it going very long and it's not an expensive little sharpener. So those are the two sharpeners I must admit I use pretty much all the time for any pencil that I'm sharpening. And I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Thank you. That's quite a comprehensive answer. <laughs> right. So you can see where I didn't put the red. I've left the orange and it might not work. But I think that's given a really nice colour. It's better than the ones I tried before because I felt they got really dull very quickly. But I was just using the red on its own. So now I'm going to go back in. It's possibly a bit wet, but I started this end. So I'm hoping it's dried a bit. I'm just going to try and add a little bit more pigment. What I'll do is I may not I'm going to have two pencils on the go, I know, but because there's so much detail, I'm going to miss bits. So every time I move the red down a bit, I'm also going to make sure that I've dealt with the seeds. It's just that I will know I will miss seeds if I don't do this a little bit more structurally. Got another question for you. Yes. Um, about um, Grace is asking which watercolour pencils, if you know, which watercolour pencils have the, the highest life pass rating? I don't know with watercolour pencils, but an artist quality, um, that's what they will have considered. So you've got Faber Castell, you've got Derwent, you've got other brands of watercolour pencils. Artist quality pencils. They will have colour charts, so it's something you can look and check for yourself. But an artist quality will have concentrated on light fast pencils um, because they're artist quality and that's what an artist would be looking for. So look at the colour charts which are available online, available from sites, available from Faber-Castell themselves. They're easily available um, and they usually do give like fast qualities so yeah if that's something you are looking for look for an artist quality one okay, I'm just thinking about darkening so doing that as I'm going so this side of the berry is dark so will be under the leaf What I'm also doing is I'm going to be careful because this is where I've come down in the past and I've made it look too dull. So I'm still thinking about, because I've got the reference, the shapes of these berries, the little cups. And I'm not going to be able to do everything. I haven't got the time to really concentrate and work on every little area. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to suggest that I have made a note of the shapes. So here you can just see I'm just suggesting the little cups that they sit in. What all the strawberry facts can I remember? 
Um, I know there's about, I know in America, in, they're a huge source of strawberries, California especially. I've got a strawberry fact. Okay, Gary with his strawberry it's fact. It's a Wimbledon related oh, strawberry see. fact. Yep. That during uh, Wimbledon fortnight, they serve approximately 27,000 kilos of strawberries wow. and 7,000 litres of cream. <laughs> Neither of those I like, but wow, that, that's impressive. So, straw actually, strawberries actually are the first um, ripening fruit, I think, of the season, especially in the UK. So, they ripen the earliest which is very handy for Wimbledon because if they ate apples, they would have to wait a little bit later, wouldn't they? But no, that's, wow, that's a lot of strawberry. That's a, that's a lot of strawberries. That is a lot of strawberries. So what I'm doing is, this is where I said I'd use a little bit of imagination. I'm looking. I'm reviewing, I'm looking at the balance, I'm looking at, it, the shading is under here, but I don't want to overshade, but I want to, let me use this one and go down the layer, I want to do some suggestion of um, shape, because it's a bit flat at the moment here, probably a bit too orange. So I'll very softly bring a bit more red in. What I've, I haven't done is I've not left some white areas, which you do get where the light hits, which is why I've got a white pen. So if I want to bring that back, I can do. So under the leaf, it's going to have the dark. Right. I'll give it one wash of water, water, then I think we'll take a small break. I'll then concentrate on the leaves and then I'll come back because what I will have done is had a chance to walk away from that and then come back and review and then I'm not overly concentrating on it. So let's see where that dark colour I can soften. Got another strawberry plant. Okay, yes. A little bit yeah. The strawberry plants as well as raspberry plants are members of the rose family. Yes, and they smell. There's something about the smell of them. So it's I was reading so it says smell the strawberries because they're a member of the rose family. I did read that. I didn't know raspberries. I didn't read that because I was looking at strawberry facts. Didn't give me raspberry facts as well, which could have done. And how, uh, where the name strawberry comes from? Old English, yes. Old, old English, but the derivation, people are wondering whether it is uh, from the straw that used to be used to keep the strawberries fresh. Oh, yeah. Or from the word strewed, which means to spread wide because they do sort of spread all over. They do. They go along the runners. I think I've got, I think my brother and his kids were strawberry picking. We remember used to do that when we were kids. Did you used to go strawberry picking? Uh, we still go strawberry picking. <sighs> Used to do that as a kid. I obviously my pudding was always very full, but my brothers, he would stuff his face with it because well, he loves strawberries. You are allowed to eat them as you go along. I know, I but it's like I say, I, I always won because my pudding was full because I wouldn't eat them. <laughs> but yes, strawberry picking as a kid. I didn't know we still had fields around. Oh yeah, around us, there's loads. Oh, that's good. So. Okay, right, I'm going to leave it, it's starting to look a bit dull. Um, so join me in a minute and we'll come back and I'll concentrate on the leaf and then come back and see what I can do with the rest of the strawberry body. Hi, I'm Ali Hargreaves and I'm here to introduce you to Ready Steady Paint. This is a monthly art subscription box for 6 to 11 year olds. Ready Steady Paint has been designed by today's artists to support, develop and encourage those of tomorrow. I have had over 20 years experience as a primary school teacher, I've worked as an artist in residence in a number of primary schools and I'm also a mum. 
I've seen how creative subjects, especially art, has declined over the years and has been taught less and less in the educational system. We feel very passionate about filling in this artistic void. We're so excited to share the experience with you and your children. We hope to give children a chance to produce beautiful pieces of art with high quality materials. Following a hand curated syllabus, each month subscribed children will receive a box full of high quality artistic goodies in the post. Using these materials, they'll be able to follow the online tutorials delivered by me and access through the Ready Steady Paint website. All this will be conveniently delivered to your door at an affordable cost. There is so much to learn and so many wonderful activities to complete and rewards to gain. So what are you waiting for? Join us on this journey of artistic fun and discovery. Hello and welcome back. We were discussing strawberry as well. The drawing was, or drawing was drying, which sounds really odd. Um, so we have even more facts. What was the calorie one? That always, that sounded good. Uh, so 100 grams of strawberries is only 50 calories and no grams of fat. Wow. Well, unless, they... unless you cover it in sugar and crazy. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, at least we we started off with very little calories. You know, it gives you a, a start. Uh, and each strawberry has around two hundred seeds. Yes. Have you painted all two hundred now? Yes, absolutely. But the other, well, I've done a hundred this side. There's another hundred around the back. <laughs> yes, Gary, I, I've counted every single seed. Um, what else did I just read? Oh, yeah, strawberries can come in white, blue, purple, black. And they can grow pretty much anywhere. They're a hardy little plant. So they grow all over the world. I don't think there's very few places that they don't grow. I'm just putting green on, to be honest. A bit of dark green. Thinking about um, darker areas where it dips in which leaves maybe behind the other leaf. But this is just a first layer of pigment. And I think that looks quite nice as it is. And you saw how quickly I put that together. But look, you can blend it and soften and create new greens. Have you got the Latin name for the strawberry there? And are you Fra is that the fractif? Oh, is that the family? No, no, that's one. That's one. Go on, give it a pronoun. I know. Because even though I did read Old English, as um, in English, I wasn't even going to attempt the Old English words oh, because it's been such a long time. I'm not going to even try the Latin word. The Latin one then, uh, Fregaria Ananasa. Yes. I d I've got it. I just wasn't going to attempt to... Um, say it and, and just not say it right so what else did we do talk about you've done the calories yeah. so I'm adding some blue because I've got a green base and the blue won't be as harsh just add some detail chances are I probably won't push the blue in and I, you see, I often use this very swirly stroke. And that's just to, because of the paper, it's rough, and I'm making sure it catches. Now, this is purple. I'm just going to give it a sharpen, because I want a really detailed. Oh, look at that. How easy was that to get that wonderful... So it's dark on this side, dark here because this leaf is behind, so is this one, and there's a dip in the middle. I didn't read how many leaves they're supposed to have either, and like I've said in the past, I usually like to know just so I can understand what each leaf is doing. Right. Let's see if I can soften. 
Or if you don't want to go for cream and sugar, yeah. black pepper, apparently. Yes, I saw that. Um, put black pepper. There's a reason for putting black pepper on. And I can't remember that either. I, I, I'm guessing they, yeah, it does smell weird to taste good. Yeah. Oh, some vinegar, I think, as well. It's that, but it just tastes like bitter. Right, using this purple, I am going to try and give a little bit more tonal value. It's getting a bit muddy for my liking, but it's also lacking a bit of tonal value. And you can see I'm using that swirly mark. So I've probably put too many layers on because I haven't quite got the fresh pencils I'm looking for like I would in a watercolour or I'm working with a watercolour mind which is okay to do but these are watercolour pencils okay let's put some dark down here a little bit of so you can see how I'm mixed between a layer of a watercolour technique, a adding water, and a pencil technique. I can soften this and make it much smoother, but I'm not going to. I, I like the idea that it's a watercolour pencil. Therefore, I'll show the watercolour pencil techniques and marks. Here, I think there's a little bit red. If I had taken the time, I probably would have really looked at the structure and concentrated on looking at the structure of the seeds. Right, I'm leaving that. I'm going to... It's just so easy to pick up a water brush, and it's the water's there. Imagine that in your sketchbook. Okay, so this was done on a very white plate and so it needs some shadow because it's floating at the moment. Um, so shadow is just clean brush, I haven't got any cleaning. What I want to do is give, put the water down first. I'm only going to give a little layer of shadow because the light wasn't overly good and I can guess a little bit but I am using the photo to give me a good idea of shadow because if you get your shadows wrong they do look odd so all I'm doing is just making sure I've got plenty of water down there's little areas it says push so I'm pushing just to drop a little bit of water down because it keeps the bristles damp but it doesn't keep them wet and when you want a wet in wet technique, it's, it's not so easy. So what I'm going to do is, in shadow, especially on a white um, um, surface that, that was on, that was on a white plate, you act, it actually reflects the colour. So shadow isn't just use solid black it, a lot of the time. You, it actually reflects the colour of the object that it's creating the shadow for. So I'm dropping some red in there. And this is another way to use watercolour pencils. You use them like a paint. You pick up colour from the pencil end and drop it in. So I'm keeping the darkest area here because where the strawberry touches the surface is the darkest. And to be honest, I'll just see what... Wet in wet is fun, you just see what it does. So it's a very small little shadow. Might do... Pick up some of the purple. See if I can just darken some of these areas. So you may feel you like a little bit more control with a, a brush to be able to create shapes. 
And for speed, I find a brush is, for me, a little bit easier. Picking up the colour. That's nice, that's really starting to redden. So I'm obviously be able to pick up much more colour from the tip of the pencil than I was putting it on unless I really scrubbed into it. And that's now, look at that red. It's give me the red I was looking for. Another way is you can put colour onto another surface here and again pick up from there if you want some subtle colour. So there's lots and lots of ways to work with watercolour pencils. And that's why I, I like to suggest them, because of all this creativity from one. Very easy to travel, so you don't have to worry about customs or anything like that. Can I take my paints abroad? When will they dry out? All of that, take watercolour pencils. And like I say, they work on other surfaces, your cartridge paper, your sketchbooks. Being a bit loose with my shape, so I'll bring that back. And I'm going to see, not sure this will work, so we'll see if I can just put some white marks around. Now, this is a very opaque pen. Might not work fully because the paper might be a little bit wet but we'll have a go I think it's still a bit damp it's not picking up but this little white gel pen let's try the because I've, I've tried the white it's not quite opaque enough what it does is it helps blend but I haven't found it to be opaque enough Let's try one more thing then. Let's try and take it from the pencil, because that might give me that. Oh yeah, there you go. Look at that. It's much more opaque, taking it directly. And you've probably got much better values than I have. I can't always see it under these bright lights. Yeah, it's a bit too wet for the pen to take at the moment. Yeah, it's just not picking it up yet. And I use this pen all the time because I know how opaque it is but my paper's a bit too wet. Just trying to show you on any place that's not, that might be dry, just how well I can bring this back. That's fine. What I'll do is I'll stop now because other than that, I'll start to, you know, I'll overwork it. So just a little strawberry um, demonstration, just showing how great watercolour pens are. They're just... I haven't needed to think about water, which you know I forget a lot. Um, it's just there, it's handy. So watercolour pencils and water brushes, and off you go. So I oh, so before we go, a uh, quick question about... Oops. Oh, was that your microphone? <laughs> I wasn't going to say that because you oh, shouted. Right, I heard it in the mic <laughs> in the headphones. The gel pen, what, what make is it? Which the gel is it? pen. Now, I've tried lots of gel pens. Um, over a watercolour, just because some tend to sink in and, and some are much better and opaque. So this is the Jelly Roll, it's the Secura, Secura yeah. one. Um, and to be honest, it, it does stutter a little bit, which means it doesn't always give me a smooth, but it depends on surface. I know this is just a little damp and that little dampness is not making it run. But on top of a coloured surface, 
this I found is the most opaque. It, it doesn't sink or get sucked into the colour. So it's a nice little inexpensive, handy little gel pen. You know, those little details, those whiskers, anything that you just want to bring back and you're not confident doing with a brush or it's too tiny. I just wish I could show you, but it is, it's, it's just not dry enough. So it's just not having it at the moment. So I hope you enjoyed that and join me next week for another live demonstration.